Hello and welcome to all to this lecture series on basic thermodynamics. This is lecture four, first law of thermodynamics. Okay, so let us begin. First law for closed system undergoing a cycle. This is the expression for the first law for the closed system undergoing a cycle. Uh, already you know that what is a cycle in which the initial and final points are same okay so the net work transfer this is the definition for the first law for closed system undergoing a cycle that the net work transfer is equal to the net heat transfer this is the net work transfer and this is equal to the net heat transfer this is the cyclic integral that means within the cycle okay so where this is the algebraic sum of all the work transferred through the system boundary please make a note of it i have clearly mentioned in the earlier lectures then work and heat both are the boundary phenomena they are on, only observed when they crosses the boundary the system boundary okay so this is the algebraic sum of all the work transfer this is w1 w2 w3 and so on some can be the work done on the system and some can be these work done by the system accordingly the conventions the sign conventions need to be followed and similarly this del q this is also the algebraic sum of all the heat transfer to the system boundary q1 plus q2 plus q3 and similarly the sign conventions need to be followed in the case of heat also okay that the heat given to the system is positive and heat taken out from the system is negative and in case of work the work done by the system is positive and work done on the system is negative this i have already told you in the last lecture okay and the first law of thermodynamics is also known as joule's law this law is also known as joule's law because many experiments were performed by mr joule okay this was a very famous physicist joule he did many experiments were performed by him to establish the relation between the quantities of work and heat okay and the first law of thermodynamics is also known as the law of conservation of energy because in this case we are just converting the energy from work to heat and from work heat to work means the work to heat or vice versa so that is why no energy is being uh, generated or no energy is being lost in this case okay so this is also known as the law of conservation of energy then first law for closed system undergoing a change of state this was for that was for the cycle and this is for and this is for the change of state the net energy transfer to the system boundary is stored is stored in the system in the form of internal energy you should know that the net energy transfer through the system boundary is stored in the system in the form of internal energy okay if the heat is added to the system is delta q and the work done by the system is delta w then you know that the net energy transfer to the system boundary that is equal to because this is the heat added to the system is positive means this is something is being added to the system and the work done by the system is del and the work done by the system is del w that means that something is being taken out from the system so the net the net effect of these two conditions that is del q minus del w is stored in the system as the change in internal energy that is delta e so del q minus del w is equal to delta e or delta q is equal to del w plus delta e so this is the statement or this is the expression for the first law for closed system undergoing a change of state please make a note of it this is nothing but same as the previous expression in the case of cyclic integral this change in internal energy will be zero and in that case you can simply get is that del q is equal to del w because in the case of cycle the initial and final points are same so the change of energy or the change of energy will be internal energy will be zero okay and but in case of pro uh, process or in case of any change of state the uh, delta e will not be zero okay so thus the change in internal energy or simply energy you can just call it as internal energy or simply energy is the net energy transfer to the system bound the system boundary means this change in internal energy is nothing but the net energy transfer the energy transfer can be take can take place in form of heat or it can take place in form of work it can enter into the system or it can exit out of the system so that difference of these two things is is the change in the system uh, change in the energy of the system okay this is the change in the energy okay this is the change in the internal energy okay and this is the net energy transfer net energy transfer whatever is entering and whatever is leaving okay then we have some important conclusion drawn from the first law of thermodynamics we have seen the first law of thermodynamics the statement in two forms one is in the form of cycle and one is in the form of change of state okay so what is the some important conclusions drawn 
that the heat transfer is a path function. You can just see that the heat transfer is a path function from this example. See, we have a PV diagram or the property diagram. We have taken two points, that is point one and that is the state point two. And we have three paths. This we are going from one to two via path A. And while we are returning from two to one while y1 path that is b and one path is c okay so first we are analyzing this path 1 a 2 b 1 1 a 2 b 1 in this case we have we know that this is a cycle this is a cycle 1 a 2 b 1 is a cycle and we can we have from the first law of thermodynamics that in this cyclic process that the total heat interaction is equal to total work interaction so we have written it in this form and again if we consider this cycle via the path 1a to c1 we can again use that first law of thermodynamics for the cycles and we can again uh, uh, arrive at this statement okay and if we subtract this equation 1 from equation subtract equation 2 from equation 1 so we will have this delta q 2b1 minus delta q 2c1 is equal to similarly in the form of this delta w 2b1 minus delta w 2c1 okay this means that this is not equal to zero you can see that this is not equal to zero it can be a special case but it can't be it can be a special case in this when these two are zero the difference of these two is zero but this is not possible in this case because you already know that del w or the boundary work if you consider that is the area enclosed by this any process in the on the pv diagram when when it is projected on the volume axis and in this you can see that if you project this c and if you project this b so you the area will be different and in this case that this is not equal to zero so you have this delta q 2 b 1 is not equal to delta q 2 c 1 since so you can say that though the initial and final points are same that for these two processes b and c you have the uh, same initial and the initial point is 2 and the final point is 1 you can see that the initial and final points are same but heat transfer are different for different paths so this clearly indicates that heat transfer is a path function this is the very important conclusion that is drawn from the first law of thermodynamics then another then another important conclusion is that the energy is a property energy is a property that means it is a <coughs> point function it does not depend upon the path again we take the same figure we we again do the analysis along the two cycles that is 1a to b1 and 1a to c1 and in this case we again subtract this equation 2 from equation 1 and we will arrive at these two these two these uh, expression and we will have this again we will uh, we will rearrange them and we will have that delta q minus delta w for 2b1 is equal to delta q minus delta w for 2c1 so from these we can note that this expression that is delta q minus delta w for the path 2b1 and for the part 2c1 is same that means though b and c are the different parts okay but the end points that is 1 and 2 are same and the quantity this del q minus del w is same for both the paths b and c this is the same for both the paths you can see okay so this means that this is this must represent something uh, as a which which can be called as a property because uh, it must represent a change in some property because this is because property is what I told you that is a point function that means it depends only upon the initial and the final position and in these two cases we are getting these expressions of delta q minus delta w same for both the paths so that means this must represent some change in some property and this property is known nothing but known as energy so this is another important uh, another important conclusion that is drawn from the first law of thermodynamics that energy is a property okay and the first uh, one was that heat transfer is a path function okay so you can see this you already know that del q minus delta w is equal to delta e this is the first law statement for first law of thermodynamics for the change of state and you know that e that energy is equal to internal it just comprises of internal energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy and if you take the delta of all these on both the sides you will have these expressions and if the system is stationary and please make a note of it this kinetic energy and potential energy what we are talking of in this context this is the bulk potential energy and bulk kinetic energy that is not the kinetic energy of the molecules in, in inside the system it is the overall kinetic energy or potential energy of the 
whole system it is the bulk kinetic energy or potential energy okay if the system is stationary then delta kinetic energy is zero and delta potential energy is also equal to zero so in that case this delta e will become equal to delta u okay and in this case the first law of thermodynamics equation changes to delta q minus delta w is equal to delta u okay or delta q can be written as delta u plus this work can be of uh, it can be a boundary work or it can be any other work okay uh, if delta other work is zero and the process is quasi static i have already told you what is a quasi static process process occurring infinitely slowly okay if delta other if this uh, delta w other is zero means other work is zero and the process is quasi static then this uh, delta w boundary will be nothing but pdv and you will get the expression in terms of delta q is equal to du plus pdv okay then another important conclusion what we have drawn from the first law of thermodynamics that is the isolated system is a constant energy system that means see again you have this expression and you know that if the system is isolated that means i have already told you what is an isolated system in which neither heat transfer means neither energy transfer nor mass transfer okay we are not concerned here with mass transfer we are just concerned here with uh, energy transfer and energy in uh, energy transfer in uh, including the heat transfer and including the work transfer no, no no nothing is changing in this so we have for the isolated system delta q is equal to 0 and delta w is equal to 0 that means this delta e this delta e is equal to 0 or this energy uh, delta e is equal to 0 or e is a constant that means the energy e of the system is the constant that is the for the isolated system this energy of the system is constant and please make a note of it this i have not written means i have used a different notation this is del and this is delta okay why i have used because this is not a this delta is like it is a change between two states state one this delta e between state one and two can be written as e2 minus e1 but this delta q i have already told you it is a path function this work is also a path function it cannot be just written in terms of the difference between the two points two state points it has to be integrated all along the path okay so please the please make a note of it while writing in any exam in any conventional exam or in any uh, expression if in, in some books it might have also been written something uh, like this that all have been used the same same notation that delta q minus delta w is equal to delta e or de, del q minus del w is equal to del e that is not correct okay please make a note that del q minus del w is equal to delta e okay this is a, a property and these are the path functions okay then we have another uh, important conclusion drawn from first law of thermodynamics that it is known as perpetual motion machine of first kind what is it it is also known as pmm1 what is it it is a machine which would certainly which would sorry which would continuously supply mechanical work without absorbing energy in any other form means it is continuously producing some work and it is continuously supplying some kind of mechanical work without absorbing energy in any other form means it is just a kind of uh, a device it is a hypothetical device which means which will which can produce the energy without having give without, without uh, getting any input if this kind of device would have been possible so the energy crisis would have uh, not been there in the universe and the problem of energy crisis would have would have uh, reduced okay but this is not possible it, that is why it is known as a perpetual motion machine of first kind that which continuously supply the mechanical work without absorbing energy in any other form okay that is pmm1 please make a note of it that this is pmm1 is this one which continuously supply mechanical work without absorbing energy in the later lectures you will come across with pmm2 pmm3 and please do not mix all those they are all different okay they are all different means they are all uh, based upon some some logic okay and according to the first law of thermodynamics that pmm1 is not possible because you already know that uh, first law of thermodynamics is a law of conservation of energy that means the energy cannot be created nor be destroyed and in this case what is happening it is just creating energy but energy cannot be created that is the law of the nature so the energy cannot be created so this pmm1 is not possible and the converse of our statement is also true okay the converse of our statement is also true that means that if you 
if you <coughs> supply some kind of if you uh, if you give some kind of mechanical work to the input and that cannot happen that is that that the work get accumulated in a system and without uh, transferring without any energy transfer in any other form that is also not possible which is the converse of this statement okay and then there is a limitation of this first law of thermodynamics what is that the first law of thermodynamics does not give the direction of the occurrence of any process means that if uh, one state point is there having some properties and another state point is there having some another properties the first law of thermodynamics will not tell you whether this process is going to occur or not means whether the process is feasible or not okay means it does not give the direction to the occurrence of any process it is the second law which clearly gives an idea about the direction of occurrence of various processes okay so this you will understand in a better way when we will we will reach the second law of thermodynamics okay so this is all for this lecture in the next lecture some uh, some more important concepts of enthalpy and some heat interactions in some processes is still left in this first law of thermodynamics so we will take up that in the next lecture and if you have any query or if you have any suggestions you can just write on the comment box okay and your suggestions are always welcome and if you need any kind of uh, clarifications on any topic or anything any subject provided or any topic provided you can just write in the comment box and i will be coming up with some of the practice questions i have already told you in that uh, uh, introduction part that you do not wait for me to give some kind of questions for practice you just uh, look at the previous year papers and just do that practice keep on practicing those questions from any book with the conventional problems also and also the objective problems from any standard book you just keep on doing it uh, on a regular basis and i will from my side i will also provide you with some good quality questions uh, after uh, two or three lectures okay so thank you for watching this lecture and have a good day